What's up, my name is Valkyr, and welcome to my Call of Duty Warzone Guide, which briefly covers what will be added when Cold War launches. This video will cover how to play Warzone as a new player, covering the basics and providing insight to help you become a better player. With millions of people playing, becoming educated is one way of getting the edge over enemies and ultimately more victories. So let's dive into it and run through what is needed. If you just want the update for Cold War as a quick overview, Warzone will be bringing following new additions including custom loadouts and operators from Cold War along with a unified XP system between Cold War, Warzone and Modern Warfare. Basically everything will be shared across all three games. When you join a match, you'll jump into a warm-up with other players for a short duration until everybody has joined the match. The warm-up isn't too important, but it gives you a chance to have fun with a few weapons before entering the match. The total number of players is 150 for each match. Before dropping, you can see how many players and squads are currently in the game on the top right side, along with how many people are still inside the plane. If you play solo, it'll only show the number of players since there are no squads. The skull icon is how many people you have killed. Pressing M on the keyboard will bring up the TAC map. The map consists of a few different icons and elements. The top left icon of the circle timer shows how long until each wave of gas will start moving towards the safe zones. Under this you have the gulag timer of when it will close. We'll get into more details about the gulag later. On the right side you have the legend with icons. Squad is your team members and squad ping is specific to the leader in your party. Loadout drops are crates which contain custom loadouts for you to choose from. You can set your custom loadout from the main menu of Warzone. This is now separate from the multiplayer. Every single player on the map will get a loadout drop 15 seconds before the gas reaches the first circle and another free one 15 seconds after Zone 4 closes. You'll hear a verbal notification and see an icon. Loadout crates can also be purchased from buy stations for a small loan of $10,000. You'll get a canister to throw and mark the loadout drop landing, but be careful because red smoke will expel into the air alerting others someone is calling in a drop. In a squad, all of the members will be able to obtain their loadouts from the same crate, which again will be marked with the loadout drop icon. You can only access your own loadout drop and not other players. If you throw the loadout drop marker on top of the storage units, you'll be able to access the box from the inside. An amazing tip, if multiple boxes drop with yours, it means somebody else is close to you, so they might be watching the loadout drop to take you out, so be cautious. If you look into the sky as the boxes drop, you can get an idea of locations of enemies in the surrounding area. Loadout crates of enemies will either disappear if they die, or if they've been used. Your loadout drop also remains even if you're inside the Gulag. With Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, this will bring another additional bunch of weapons that you will be able to choose from a custom loadout. Other than the cool custom weapons that you can get in your loadout drop, the other main reason to obtain one is for the perks. You can set perks in your loadouts and these will be active from the loadout chosen. If you get a second loadout drop later in the game and choose a different loadout, your original perks will be replaced with the new ones. Perks are passive abilities that will help you gain extra advantages. I won't be covering each on this video, but I will in the future. The second section down on the legend is contracts. I'm probably a bit of a boomer because I thought battle royale games were just about, you know, shooting until victory. Contracts are objectives for you to complete during the game, which can be very rewarding. Contracts can be seen all over the map by their icons, so if you want to start a game by completing one, chances are you'll find one in the area that you'll be dropping. So let's take a look at them. The bounty contract sets another player on the map as a bounty target. The minimap will now show a general location of the target to hunt. The player who has the bounty on the head will have a threat indicator on the screen. The more bars that are filled on the threat indicator means the person hunting them is closer in range. The closer the hunter is, the smaller the circle is around the target. The player hunting will receive money for completing the contract if they eliminate the target. Alternatively, if the bounty target kills the hunter, they'll also receive some money. There is only a limited amount of time to complete the contract, so if you're committing to it, make sure to act quickly. The recon contract is a pretty cool one. Once activated, you'll need to navigate to a chosen location and hold the area for a short amount of time. Once you're at that location, a flare will rise into the air like a burning bright star, which notifies anyone in the area that someone is currently doing a recon contract. If you take the location, you'll be rewarded with loot and some money, and the map will also show you the next location of the circle zone, also known as Circle Peak. If you complete multiple recon contracts in a row, it will show you each stage of the circles until the final one. Pretty cool, right? Just mind out that people can see the recon station before you reach it, so be wary of anyone who might have seen it and could be hiding in the area. The supply run contract sets a single buy location which you'll get 80% off any item, or you'll get a free self revive, which is always handy. This is fairly straightforward contract, but usually requires a vehicle to get to the objective because it's normally pretty far away. The scavenger contract is probably the most popular for a couple of reasons. A loot box will spawn onto the map and the player needs to run and open the box. Inside you'll find loads of loot and cool treats. After the first you'll have to do this two more times, the third being the final. 
Inside the final box, you're guaranteed to get an armor satchel, which can hold up to eight plates of armor compared to only being able to hold five. Scavenger is a great way to earn money and get loot quickly after dying. In Duos and Higher, you also have a contract called Most Wanted, which sets yourself as a target on the entire map. You can kind of see yourself as a little crown. The idea with Most Wanted is that you survive until the timer runs out. You'll also be rewarded with money and your team will also be revived. If you complete a contract, you'll be rewarded with a contract bonus, increasing the money and XP received if you complete another. Doing multiple contracts is a great way to increase your funds, which can be spent on shiny things at the buy station or buying your bad teammate back into the game. Next on the legend is the buy station. As the name suggests, this is where you can buy different items to help you along the way in the game. By default, the buy station is closed, and if it's open, that means somebody else has used it. The buy station offers an armor plate bundle, which includes five plates, a gas mask, which will keep you alive outside of the zone in the gas for a short amount of time, cluster strike and precision airstrike, which calls for explosive air support, UAV, which is really important and very effective early game, which lets you see enemies on the map. If you call three UAVs right after each other, you'll gain an advanced UAV, which shows enemies across the whole map and which direction they're facing. The only people that will be hidden from UAVs are those that have the ghost perk. The self revive lets you pick yourself back up after being downed. It takes a bit of time to administer, but if you're at long range, this can be really beneficial, especially during solo runs. If you're playing in a team, instead of instantly dying, if you don't have a self revive, you'll be knocked down so your team can pick you back up. The munitions and armor boxes get placed onto the floor, which you can use to refill your ammo and equipment or for a full set of armor. If enemies spot the munitions box, they can shoot at it, which will then blow up like C4. We've already covered the loadout drop, so if you get one early, it's time to go noob hunting. And finally, if you're in duos or higher, you'll also see your teammates inside the buy stations, and you can buy them back if they're dead. Lastly on the legend, we've got vehicles. The ATV can hold two people and is pretty nippy at the expense of being really vulnerable to people shooting you. It's highly recommended to put a trophy system on any vehicle that you use. The trophy system will deny any incoming explosives. The SUV can fit the whole squad, and is a little more protected than other vehicles which are open. It can hit a fairly moderate speed, but will stick out like a sore thumb. The helicopter can hold a whole squad, however this isn't available in solos. It's currently the only aerial vehicle, and it's the fastest and most efficient way of travelling. The chopper also has flares which can be fired to prevent locked on missiles. The cargo truck only has one person inside the vehicle, but your team can jump onto the back. If you're feeling extra spicy, you can also park other vehicles onto the back and take them for a ride. The Tech Rover is the biggest sibling of the ATV and can hold four people. It's slightly slower than the ATV, but at least you can have a party with your friends. And finally, we have the Train, which is a brand new addition to the game, at least when this video was made. It just loops around the map. The Train has multiple orange legendary boxes, so this is a potential hot drop. Also newly added are underground train stations, which will transport you to other areas around the map. Simply enter the train and you'll get teleported across to the new location. You can see which location you'll end up in by the signs around the station. Just be careful, because the train will also go into areas that are covered by gas. Yup, we learn by mistakes. Be wary of the tracks, because they can also electrocute you as well, while you're dying in the gas of course. We've now covered the legend and what the icons mean. The final part to note on the tactical map is that you can zoom around and place a ping on the map, which will also tell you the distance in meters how far away it is. Ideally, if you're diving to a location you ping, you want to be sub 1000 meters in distance so you can reach it quickly enough to start looting up. The map is filled with different key locations. We will cover each in detail for this video, but you should drop all of them and become familiar with the locations. Some drops are more popular than others, so if you're feeling overwhelmed at the start, find something a little more remote to get your footing with the game. You'll also be able to see the edge of the first circle in white on the map. Inside the circle is the safe area. Right, let's finally get out of the plane. Once you've set a drop location, you'll slam yourself out of the plane, ready to obviously win the game. When dropping, the parachute will automatically open just before hitting the ground. You also have the option to open your parachute early and free fall with your weapon out. If you do manually pull the chute early, you'll need to remember to pull it again before you hit the ground or you'll go splat. This is one of my special moves. If you want to get the maximum distance when dropping, glide sideways which will reduce your fall speed to 6.6, .6, meaning you'll end up further. Once you reach the ground, you have a couple of choices. You can start by doing a contract, or you can run around looking for loot via the loot boxes or items scattered on the ground. Loot boxes come in a couple of colours including blue, which are more common and have the potential to have a rare item inside, and orange which includes a guaranteed rare item inside. However, these are harder to find. Loot boxes contain items such as weapons, money, armor, utility, and ammo, and you'll find more of them in hot drop locations. 
you'll be able to hear the loot boxes because they make quite a distinct sound. Ideally, you'll want to find armor quickly when you drop because you only drop with two out of three plates. You're guaranteed at least one full plate of armor when you kill an enemy. Let's quickly break down the player screen to understand all the icons and elements. At the top left you have the minimap, as before it can be opened larger by pressing M on PC or the tack map button on consoles. The minimap can be adjusted in the settings to be square or round, and you can change if the map is static or rotates. Just below the minimap is the circle timer again, and the number inside the circle indicates what current zone you're on. If the icon is white, this shows the amount of time until the gas starts moving. If the icon is red, this means the gas is closing in onto the next circle. To expand on actually what is going on with the circle zones and the gas nonsense, the zones are the safe area to play inside on the map. Every time the gas meets the edge of the zones, a new zone will be highlighted on your map, so remember to keep checking regularly. The zones will close in until zone 7, which is the final zone. The final zone won't get any smaller, but it will move from one location to another to prevent campers and make sure the game actually ends. The number of zones will still increase every time it moves. The gas moves at a relative speed to the next zone, so it's nearly impossible to outrun the first zone, but you can easily run the rest of the zones so long as you're carrying a light weapon. The top middle is the compass showing you the direction you're facing, along with the name of the location you're currently in. You'll also see enemies that are making noise with a little red dot. The top right shows you how many players are still remaining in the game, including how many squads and how many kills you have. If you're being spectated, an icon will also appear showing you how many people are watching you. The bottom left indicates how much armor you currently have on your body, along with the health bar and how much mullah you've got in your pockets. It'll also have a plus icon if you've got a self revive and a star next to the name of the squad leader. To the right is how many armor plates you're carrying and if you have one next to the armor plates will be a gas mask icon and how many bars left until it becomes obsolete. On the bottom right you've got your current weapon that you have equipped and below it will show if you can change the firing style of that weapon along with how much ammo you have. Next to that is your tactical utility, your lethal utility, and above is your field upgrade, which would be dead silence, armor boxes, armor boxes, and utility like that. And above that, it will show if you have any air support or shield turrets. The map is full of buildings that you can enter, so keep an eye out for doors. Doors can be peeked through by holding up your sights, or you can just dash through all guns blazing by running into the door, or just open it like a regular person. Some of the taller buildings now have zip lines dotted around, which will allow you to zip quickly to the top without needing to navigate inside the building. Just beware that there will be a moment of unclipping yourself from the zip line before you can start shooting, so if somebody is waiting for you at the top, it could be bad news. Some buildings, including the police station, have ammo refill stations, which are super handy. There's also one located on the train that's circling around the map, along with a few other buildings. The stadium is now open for business before being locked and you weren't able to get inside. There are zip lines on the outside of the stadium allowing you to get onto the roof, which gives you a great view of the surrounding area. You can interact visually by pinging items for your team, or if you double tap the ping button, you can mark an enemy location. I usually use the ping button to give myself a distance reading, which can help with sniper shots or planning my next location to run to. You can also ping items on the map for your teammates to pick up, or if they need anything, you can drop money, ammo, or even your weapon. On PC, if you left click, you'll give small amounts at a time, or if you right click, it'll give everything all at once. Being able to move properly in Warzone is essential. Running and sliding can get you out of tricky situations and safely into cover. The slide cancel technique will allow you to move even quicker. To do this, simply sprint, then slide, followed by pressing the crouch button and jump right after each other. It may take some practice, but it'll help you move quicker. Other items you can interact with around the map are ladders, climbing up walls, boxes and buildings, and of course the zip lines which we've already covered. You can even go up elevator shafts in select buildings. Crouching and proning can keep you hidden, or keep you shielded behind cover which allow you to armor yourself back up amongst a ton of other things. It'll also make you quieter, which is important in a game when you're trying to be stealthy. We'll briefly be touching on the weapons in this guide. I could probably have another guide at the same length just for the weapons. From loot boxes, you'll be able to get basic weapons, but also weapons which have different attachments, increasing the properties for that gun. You'll notice that some weapons you pick up from boxes will have a different name. These are the blueprint names for the weapon, which include custom attachments and custom skins. The weapons in Warzone are projectile, which means that there's a travel time between the gun and the target. For long distance shots, you'll have to compensate for bullet drop. When you're fighting an enemy, you'll first have to break their armor before you can do damage to their health, unless you have special stopping power rounds, which will do damage to both. You'll know when the stopping power rounds are live, because the bullets in the gun will be orange, and so will your crosshair. You'll know when the enemy's armor has broken, because there'll be a blue indicator, and you'll hear a specific noise. I would highly recommend to get weapons that have silencers attached to them. The reason being is that you won't appear on the minimap when you're shooting, otherwise you'll appear as a red dot. 
You can unlock attachments for your weapons by playing with and ranking up specific weapons in Warzone or the multiplayer. Blueprints are unique skins with attachments for weapons that can be bought from the store using cup points, or special ones can be unlocked by an in-game event called Contraband. Contraband is another style of contract in which you need to deliver a payload to a chopper. Contraband appears randomly after completing contracts, but it's pretty rare. Different weapons have different uses at various ranges. Of course, long range you could use a sniper rifle or a marksman rifle, however you have to be careful as while scoped in and looking at an enemy, they'll see a small glint of light from your sniper which will reveal your location. There are different types of scopes available in the game including a thermal scope which will help highlight enemies when scouting. I'm personally not a big fan of it, but you might be. The weapon types included in Warzone are assault rifles which are great for medium to long range, SMGs which are great at closer range due to the higher fire rate, shotguns, light machine guns, marksman rifle, sniper rifle and melee which includes a riot shield. Other weapons also available are handguns, launchers like the RPG and smaller melee weapons. You also have a slot for a lethal and tactical utility which includes grenades, heartbeat sensors, molotovs and a bunch of other things. Most players will always want to try and get their custom loadout as quickly as possible as mentioned earlier because of the included perks which can give you an advantageous edge. If you kill somebody you can pick up everything they were carrying including weapons, utility and fingers crossed a fat stack of cash. Unfortunately you can't pick up perks. If you unfortunately die in a fight because of, you know, lag, then you'll enter the Gulag. The Gulag is a prison in which you'll face another player who has died in a 1v1 battle with random weapons. The weapon choices inside the Gulag will rotate now and again. You can also win the Gulag by securing the zone in the center of the map after the timer is up. If you win the Gulag because you're an absolute beast, you'll get put back into the game for a second chance, but if you lose, you'll have to be brought back by a teammate or you'll have to simply just finish the game if you're in solos. There is however one exception here which we will talk about after the Gulag. A kill in the Gulag still counts towards your kill count and the best part about the Gulag is actually the death comms. If you die in the Gulag after picking up perks, you'll get to keep them if you win. The Gulag will close when the Gulag timer runs out. You can find this when you press M on the tactical map or you can see it just below the minimap saying closing. During the game, special events can happen randomly. These include Jailbreak, an event in which anyone inside the Gulag gets released along with anybody who might be dead and spectating. This is the only way in solos to come back to life if you lose in the Gulag, however the chances of this happening are pretty slim. The second event is Fire Sale, because who doesn't like a sale? Fire Sale cuts items by 80% of the buy stations for a limited amount of time and the self revive is absolutely free, stock up as much as you can when these sales are active. But be careful because everybody loves a discount. The Juggernaut event drops a heavy metal armor Juggernaut suit that a player can put on. The Juggernaut has insanely high level of health and can only heal up from killing other enemies. The Juggernaut shoots a deadly minigun, so you should always plan your approach carefully, either sniping at range or using a cluster or airstrike to damage the player. In very rare instances, you can get Juggernaut loadout drops from legendary crates, but probably only inside bunkers. I've had one of these. Juggernauts are very powerful, but extremely slow. The supply chopper event calls in a load of helicopters which are just chilling around the map. If you shoot one enough to bring it down, there'll be a ton of loot to pick up, but obviously a lot of people will run towards the choppers which are downed. Once the zone shrinks, any choppers outside will explode. You need to know that, but it's pretty cool. The Warzone map includes easter eggs and new ones will probably be added in the future. The map includes secret bunkers dotted around locations. Bunkers need either a passcode to be opened or a red keycard. The red keycards can be found randomly from opening loot boxes. I'll post the access codes and locations of the bunkers in my discord which you can find in the description. I'll go into more details about bunkers on another video. During matches other rare items can also be found including specialist bonus which unlocks every class perk and every weapon perk for both the weapons the player has. Foresight is another kill streak which can be found similar to recon and will show you every single circle location. As the game progresses and the circles become smaller you'll want to make sure that you're kitted and ready for battle. One perk that is a must is Ghost because it will keep you off the UAV and off heartbeat sensors. The games are played fairly differently between solos which you'll find much slower paced and more campers to squads which will be faster paced and more pushing. At the end of a match you'll be rewarded with XP based on how well you did during the game which considers placement, match bonus, loot, combat and miscellaneous. You'll also unlock weapon XP during the match and rank up weapons the same you would as the multiplayer. 
This brings us to the end of my first video on Warzone and the beginner's guide. I hope that you've enjoyed it and you've been able to learn a few things. I want to give a special thanks to my community, including Rollenberg, Elliot, Intron D, Jack, and everyone who's provided vital information for this video during my streams. I would absolutely love and invite you to come hang out during a stream if you want more educational COG content or just want to hang out and chill. Make sure to subscribe for more content, like this video, and let me know in the comments if this video has been helpful to you. This is the first video of Warzone and the Call of Duty series, and if you have enjoyed it, I would love to make more, so if you did enjoy it, let me know.